All right, so kind of an interesting stage has been reached. Asmund Gold is now at the stage of like, well, let me have this debate with Hassan um, so that, you know, I can, you know, uh, clarify like what I was saying about, you know, Islamic, Palestinian, Arab culture, this, that, and the other. Um, but what was very interesting was the, the way uh, Hassan was putting things. Um, and so I just am now, Asmongold, um, no, you, you actually have all kinds of ideas sort of wrong. No, Islam is almost exactly um, the kind of nightmarish, evil um, religion that people wish Christianity was. People desperately wish that um, there's these Catholic nations that were just these horrid places at all times to live and everybody, nobody could speak and say anything and yada, yada, yada. And that's not true. Um, you mostly get this from the Protestant tradition, th then Freemasonic tradition, because Freemasonry and Protestantism are linked together intrinsically. Um, that's why the, the, the Freemasons are uh, by, uh, what was it, by credo, are against uh, the Vatican and uh, Catholicism, but they're very, very careful to not make it clear that they are also against the Orthodox Church. Neither Catholics nor the Orthodox allow their members to be Freemasons, seeing it as actually uh, because of the secret vows, that it's, it's by credo. It is dedicated to men making secret vows, forming secret groups that maintain high levels of secrecy. And, um, and it's not that it's like they have secrets. It's like, no, they're, it will, it's a society with, with, that keeps the, each other's secrets. Um, and, and so, one of the things about these, uh, about especially the Freemasons, is we, we wouldn't even have Islam in the first world, uh, in the Christian world, without Freemasons. And, and it doesn't matter what anybody wants to tell you. You only have to look up, you just search Lord Quilliam, like the Quilliam Foundation, um, and you add the word Freemasonry in your search, and you'll find, yes, he was a 33rd degree Freemason, and he brought Islam to Britain officially and built the first giant mosque. Um, and, and so he was the white sheik of Britain. Um, this is like the earliest 1900s, maybe the late 1800s. The shrine degree of Freemasonry, that's um, Wallace's... Uh, Wallace was conferred some type of degree um, by the Bektashi Sufis, and he brought that to into Freemasonry. Um, and so this is really very important because really you have this weird nexus of these modern ideas that oppose Orthodox uh, Christianity and Catholicism that, lo that, that both... Um, are kind of the source of Islam entering the first world, and these are the intellectuals that were particularly fond of um, Marxism, Leninism, and, and eventually Stalinism as well. Um, it consistently, this is consistent, it, it, it a lie, it, it's, uh, you live in Texas, um, and, and you probably have heard a lot of kind of stuff like this. No, it, I didn't believe it either. I have a small library of books on this subject. Um, and it's, and yeah, and, and eventually I ended up coming to the determination. Because it was really when, when the Orthodox started to really discuss is, is both Islam and the Freemasons and their relationship historically to them. Um, because the also something that you've never heard is that there's do you ever wonder why there's um, castles on the coasts of Britain? Why France has so many castles? It was because for hundreds of years the uh, uh, the Islamic world assaulted what the hell? Okay, that's weird. 
the uh, Islamic world assaulted um, the, uh, what's it called, um, the uh, Europe, I mean, for hundreds. It was, it, it was, and it was contiguous. It wasn't like it would stop and then it would start again and it was, Europeans would do this and the, no. They've always believed in conquering the entirety of the planet. That's why within the first 200 years, they were in the Philippines. Christianity didn't get much farther than the Mediterranean within the first 200 years. It, the, the further, it really it was about by the year three or 400 that it made it to China via Persia. And then Islam came along in the 700s and 800s, closing up the Silk Road. And so nobody even knows um, Christianity made it to China. It wasn't until very recently. And... Uh, it was because the communists were willing to sort of let some of that information out to the public um, in kind of this cultural exchange thing like, hey, we're not total lunatics. We didn't, you know, I mean, that famine and everything. Hey, come on, guys. You know, famines happen. Um, you know, we, it wasn't that uh, us communists were so, so terrible that we, we literally um, almost wiped out the, the, the Chinese people. No, it's because it, they're never at fault. Islam is never at fault and the communists are never at fault. You, descending from Christian society, you immediately were like, maybe I took it too far. Immediately. Your father, might likely, you know, religious or not. What, hey, are you okay? Because that's what that, that's called self-effacement. To a great extent, you will see, is it like, Hassan doesn't have self-effacement. You'll notice this, that, that, that there's very specific ideologies. They're usually modern. They don't have self-effacement. Um, yeah. And so the, the, you, apologizing doesn't matter. Apologize, it will never matter. They're going to just keep trying to ruin everything that it, it's just what they do they, it, it's it's just how it is I, until islam has this kind of major change that the modernist schools of it are sort of eliminated which is what you're seeing the modernists really are being eliminated the marxist leninists of the ypg and uh pkk the kurdish uh commies the um and they they have their own sufi traditions and like the Naqshbandi, which the Obama administration was working with to try to uh, change the uh, power in Turkey. So when you saw that coup in Turkey, well, that was, that was the, the uh, Gulenist, the uh, Fatula Gulen's people. So a lot of, there's, there's all kinds of intrigues going on. Um, but I'm sorry, it's just one of these things of Christianity just, it, it just makes people better people. It's hard, but it makes people better people. Maybe Islam can do that too, but it has this really hard problem rejecting Marxists and Marxist-Leninists. Um, and, and, and a key reason why is because um, when it's moderate, it's kind of boring. It's like any religion. Once moderation sets in, there's no wild, you know, how do you motivate the men to do anything? You know, how do you get the, the young thinking guys into... No, they're going to have to get into science and industry. That's what will motivate them. Doing business. Have you ever looked into how, like, e Egypt and businesses? Somebody running a business in Egypt. If you were to ever look into this, there's like a, a mountain range of laws to keep you from properly running your business. It's almost impossible. So Egypt alone, I think, has something like, like most of the businesses, something crazy, like 70 to 90% of the businesses are illegal. The, and it's, that is super normal in Islamic nations. It, it's very, very, very normal, unfortunately. And it's because the religion has this problem of you have to find it in the Quran. This is not... The Bible didn't... Christians didn't have this problem. That's just something that, that 
commies and Freemasons really want people to think about Christianity. No, Christianity had it, it, it adapts. It's, it's highly, highly adaptive, just like the way Europeans are. Just like how when you talk to this, this wacko Marxist, you know, uh, um, you know, Turkish uh, Kemalist apologist or whatever the fuck Hassan is, that um, it, it, you're the one who's apologetic. Where he's just, he's just trying to wrap you, wrap you up in bullshit. He's just trying to wrap you up in a turban, you know? And it's just like, uh, no, actually... The Palestinians in Israel that have not become citizens and constantly fight them are doing it because they have been a part of this the, these groups that were Marxist-Leninist that before were into Hitler. Not kidding. This the, the Palestinian uh, Pal, Mufti of Jerusalem, Palestine Mufti of Jerusalem, Hitler, and you're going to just be like, oh yeah, I've seen this photo, yeah, because. Palestinians were into that. Why do you think Saddam Hussein's face was on everywhere? And in a religion that will destroy Buddhist temples because they're bowing to a man, an image of a man. Where's the images of Muhammad? Not allowed. See, you're not supposed to worship a human. And, and or an ideal. This is why, like, the uh, Islamic Nazis of World War II, the Hanshar Brigade, they're, they, this, they're fundamentally a, a kind of... Um, people would say that they're not Muslim. And now, they, of course, they thought they were Muslim, but it was because the Turks started this idea that the, that the state would be... Uh, the Kemalism, Kemal Ataturk, would be over... The religion it was highly highly freemasonic in its basis and really no not even the muslims disagree with that um if you talk about kemal ataturk um you will usually find a muslim will post in your uh comments that kemal ataturk was a homosexual and a jew because that's what they think you know that woman who worked for uh hillary clinton huma abedin that last name well it's like it means basically like it refers to slave to god well you see this is also a term that even um muslim people in the west will say that their own parents refer to people who are of african descent to this day as the abedin as the slaves because they're they and um slaves from india are still used to this day. It, it, it was the West. It was the Christian West that, that crushed the Islamic world by destroying their slave trade. That's what, that's what destroyed their, their, their empire. It, it, was, it was long, long amounts of sea battles, and it was because the Turks dominated. The, the Turks and the Barbary uh, pirates are who dominated the seas for, for hundreds of years. And nobody likes admitting this. The Muslims don't want to admit this. You talk about this, you'll find communists will fucking cover for them and defend them. So, so don't be fooled. No, no, no. Talk to right-wingers. Don't, don't listen to the left. Stop listening to the left. Why? Why, why are you even doing that? No, they, they, you see, they, they don't believe it. Look up what happens to the gays in Iran. You know, this is why, uh, what's his face, uh, was it Amenajad once said, there's no, no, there's no gays in Iran because they, they take, they chop them off. You want to be a woman, you'll, you'll be a woman. You see, there's a tradition of this in the Islamic world. You can find it on Wikipedia, except for some reason they like to kind of hide it. See, if you look up C-O-C-E-K, it'll talk about how this is a word for a child, like a boy. But then if you keep scrolling down, you'll see that there's this image of, like, a boy in this really weird outfit. And then it says C-O-C-E-K, but it has this little, little 
little thing above one of the C's because you see that's a it, so that you, no no you see it's a different word. People go oh no no there's a reference to some really disparaging movie about no it's that there is a long tradition of dancing boys. You could even still find gypsies doing the kochek dance. And you could find males doing it. And when you look at it, you'll be like, this is rather feminine. But maybe uh, they're just, maybe masculinity is a little different in the Islamic world. No. They were, they were little, they were little boy toys. Because you can do that in Islam and not be gay at one time in the Turkish Empire. So, just so you get an understanding of this. Like, Albania, just white people that the Turks enslaved made the Muslims. That's the Janissaries. And later, the Bekta- they become the Bektashi Sufis. It's just so, so you really you need to, to understand. There, no, you were, you were on point. That, that almost everything, when you really start to look into Islam, you'll, you'll start to realize, no, they, they literally almost take every possible thing and in some way kind of make it bad when it's good. Like, they're the kind of people who they want to, they, Buddhism always has to go. Almost every single culture that is Buddhist, that is, it, it had to deal with Islam, they, they, the, this is unbelievable hardcore adversarialism. Everyone's, oh, why are you so mean to the Muslims? And it's like, okay, everywhere they are, they're invaders. Everywhere. They're always colonial invaders. They, they, there's no disputing this. People who say that's not true, they're liars. It is this weird thing that Islam likes to claim. Just, just kook ideas. And just say, no, no, that's the truth. It's, you, you don't know. No, no, Christians and Jews, they, they tell, they, they blah, 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 and they change all their scriptures and this and that. I have a book that, that shows, like, errors in the Quran that have been changed as time has gone on. They don't like talking about this. It's Western scholars that have been like, you do know the Quran in Morocco is in quite different than the one in Indonesia. And not that they're different languages. No, they're both in Arabic. It's not really a Quran unless it's in Arabic. It's just that they're totally different in, in, in considerable ways. Because people, they were all done from, from voices. These, this really isn't like a, a literate tradition like the Greeks or, or the Syriac Greco tradition that then becomes the Latin and Roman tradition of, of constantly going through, do, do these documents have authenticity? And it took hundreds of years for Christians to decide which documents had authenticity. You also need to understand there's not a single book of the Bible in the Quran. It's just like characters from the Bible show up and do things and say things, you know, and it, it's very strange. There's a reason they didn't translate the Quran officially until the 50s, not 1850s, the 1950s. So all the Asmongold fa- fans, Asm- uh, and Asmongold's friends, no, no. You, what you need to do is you need to get hep to political Islam. And you're, you're really, you're never going to see the world the same again. You won't know what to really do be- when you realize, like, no, it is considered completely rational and good to lot these people, their, their mama and daddy raised them to lie to my face. You're going to learn this about people who you've probably played video games with people maybe you even say are, are, are friends or associates online. You're going to find out, like, no, they, they, they will lie to my face. Just same thing with communists. They, they really, they, it was great because there was a debate um, on Fresh and Fit with that guy Haas. And one of the first things that came up was this guy started talking about the nature of truth. And Haas just, he took it out in the stratosphere. Because that's what commies have to do. The commies and Muslims are always like that. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. And, and you're, I'm sorry to, to, to fuck with your world, bro. But um, you just simply, you're apologizing. You're, you're looking at a dog. You're looking at a rabid dog telling it not to bite. 
and and you're trying to explain to it that you you know you don't really think it's a bad dog, but it's no. It, it's a rabid dog, and um, the the more it has contact with people, it, the the more the 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 rapidity will spread, and that's just it. I mean, that's all it is. And, and you could look country after country. Lebanon wasn't like that. I was I within my lifetime I've seen the change come. There was no such thing as a hijabi. I, this is something that started popping up after one of the Gulf Wars. So, just so you know, just putting it out there. Peace.